Hey everyone, welcome back to Las Vegas. The Cube is live, I can't say that enough. We are live at AWS reInvent 2021. Lisa Martin with Dave Nicholson. Hey Dave. Hey Lisa. Having a good day so far? So far, so good. We have an alumni back with us. We have about 100 segments on the Cube at AWS reInvent. We've got one of our original alumni back with us. Zaki Bajwa joins us, the Global Head of Partner Solution Engineers at Stripe. Zaki, welcome back. Thank you Lisa, thank you Dave. Pleasure to be here. Isn't it great to be back in person? Love it, love it. Can't do a whiteboard virtually. You can, it's not the same. It's not the same, and all those conversations I'm sure that you've had with partners and with customers the last couple days, that you just can't replicate that over Zoom. Exactly. So just for anyone who doesn't understand, AWS has a massive ecosystem of partners, so we'll talk about Stripe and AWS. But for anyone that doesn't know what Stripe is, give us the, the lowdown. You guys started 10 years ago. Talk to us about Stripe, the business strategy, what it's like today. Yeah, sure, so as you guys know, Stripe started 10 years ago by two brothers, John and Patrick Collison, and they really focused on the developer and helping the developers accelerate digital commerce. Why? Because the status quo at the time was one where a developer needed to you know, build banking relationships with issuing banks, merchant banks, card networks, payment networks, tax liabilities, data compliance, and all of these manual processes that they had to deal with. So what Stripe aspires to do is build a uh, complete commerce platform leveraging our integrated suite of products that is really allowing us to build what we call the global payments and treasury network. So if you think about this global payment and treasury network or what we call the GPTN, it's meant to not only help abstract all of that complexity from a global payments infrastructure point of view, but also help move money in a simple and borderless and uh, uh, programmable way just like we do in the internet. So that's the core essence of Stripe, is to build this global payment treasury network to allow for money movement to happen in a simple and borderless manner. Simple and borderless, two, two key things there. How has the business strategy evolved in the last 10 years, and specifically in the last 20, 22 months? Yeah, great question. So as you can imagine with COVID, you know, David, you can order a cup of coffee or a brand new car, and that whole direct-to-consumer model has accelerated in COVID, right? We've accelerated ourselves going to upwards of 6,000 employees. We've been able to answer or manage upwards of 170 billion API requests in the last 12 months alone, right? We deliver upwards of five nines from an availability performance point of view. That means 13 seconds of downtime or less a month. And we're doing this originally starting off for the developer, David, as you talked about, allowing developers to deliver, um, you know, uh, what I call process payments, accept payments, and, and reconcile payments. But the evolution that you're talking about, Lisa, has really led to three key areas of focus that our users are requesting from us. And Stripe's first operating principle is really that user first mentality, similar to Amazon's, where we listen to our users and they're really asking for three key areas of focus. Number one is all around modernizing their digital commerce. So this is big enterprises coming to us and saying, whether I'm a Unilever or a Ford, how do you help me with a direct-to-consumer, e-commerce type platform, number one. Secondly, is companies like Deliveroo and Lyft creating what we call marketplaces. Also think about Twitter and Clubhouse, more solopreneurs, entrepreneurs kind of marketplaces. Third is all around SaaS business models. So think about Slack and Atlassian that are customer of ours and accelerating the journey with us around digitizing digital commerce. So that's the first area of evolution. The second area is all around what we call embedded FinTech. So we know, just like Amazon helped accelerate infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and function as a service, we're helping accelerate FinTech as a service. So we believe every company and in every industry aspires to add more and more FinTech capabilities in their core services that they offer to their customers. So think about a Shopify or a Lyft, they're adding more FinTech capabilities, leveraging Stripe APIs that they offer to their consumers. Likewise, when you think about a Monzo Bank or an N26, what we call Neo Banks, they're creating more banking as a service components. So the second area of evolution is all around FinTech as a service or embedded FinTech. And the third area of focus, again, listening to our users, 
is all around users are saying, hey Stripe, you have our financial data. How do you help us more with business operations and automating and optimizing our business operations? So this is revenue management, revenue reconciliation, financial reporting, all of the business processes you and I know, code to cash, order to cash, pay to procure, help us automate, optimize, and not just optimize, but help us create net new business models. So these are the three key areas of evolution that we've seen. Modernizing digital commerce, embedded FinTech, and then certainly, last but not least, business operations and automating that. And your target audience is the developers? Are you having conversations now that are more, I mean, this is like transformative to industries and disruptive. Are you having conversations higher up in the chain? Great, great question, and this is the parallel with Amazon. Just like Amazon started with developers, AWS, and then went up to the C-suite, if you will, we're seeing the same exact thing. Obviously, our DNA is developer first, making it intuitive, natural, easy for developers to build on Stripe, but we're seeing more and more C-suite leaders come to us and saying, help us evolve our business model, help us modernize and digitize net new business models to get new revenue streams. So those parallel work streams of both developer mindset and C-suite led is certainly a big evolution for us. And we're looking to learn from our Amazon friends as to the success that they've had there. Do you have any examples of projects that developers have proposed that were at first glance completely outlandish? Something, something that, you know, is, is there any sort of corner of the chart use case where Stripe didn't think of it, some developer came up with the idea. Maybe it can't be done yet. If you have an example of that, that would be very interesting. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you two examples. So as I said, we're definitely a user first entity, that's our operating principle, we always think about the user. So when we go to developers and say, what are you struggling with, what are you thinking about, what are the next set of things you need from us, and a simple comment around tax started to come up. And do you know in the US there's 11,000 tax jurisdictions? That you, when you're selling something online, have to abide to these different jurisdictions. So one of the things that we then evolved into is created a Stripe tax product which initially users or developers were really uh, struggling with and working on. So we created a Stripe tax product, we've done an acquisition called Tax Yard that helps us accelerate that journey for tax. The other one is this notion of low code that we see in the marketplace right now, where developers saying, hey, give me more embeddables on top of the primitives that you've created, on top of the APIs. So we went leveraging what our customers have already done created things like a checkout capability, which is a simple redirect, highly customized for conversion, which you can just integrate to one API, you have a full checkout capability, you can embed that into your platform, which didn't exist before and needed you to really integrate into different APIs. So all of these capabilities are what developers have really focused on and, and built that we've done leverage and excelled at. Yeah, I think, I think between Lisa and myself, We've, we've paid taxes in about 7,000 of those. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, not not 11,000 jurisdictions, but you know, all the various sales taxes and everything else, so we're, we're, we're sort of familiar with that. I, I, I think so. So here we are you know, on the floor at reInvent, great, as we said, to be back in version, the 10th annual, but with it, as each year goes by, AWS's ecosystem of partners gets bigger Amazing. and bigger, the flywheel gets I don't know, I think faster and faster, the number of announcements that came out yesterday yeah. and today. Talk to us about some of the common traits yeah. that Stripe and AWS share. Yeah, so I, I've mentioned a few of them. One is certainly the user first mentality where we're listening to users. That tax example is a perfect one of how do we decide new features, new capabilities based on user first. Amazon does that better than anyone else. Second is that developer mindset, focus on the developer. Those will be the core persona we target. Give you an example, Lyft, we all know Lyft, they wanted to create instant payouts for their drivers. So their developers came to us and say, our developers don't want to get paid, I'm sorry, our drivers don't want to get paid in a week or two weeks. So we work with their developers to create an instant payout mechanism. Now, in six months, over 40% of the drivers are using Stripe instant payout powered by Stripe. And that's a developer first mindset, again, back to uh, AWS. And then the third is really around the go to market and the market opportunity is very similar. You talked about the developer persona and the C-suite, very similar to Amazon, but also we're not just catering to 
enterprise and strategic big customers, we are just as much focused on startups, SMB, mid-market, digital native, just like Amazon is. And I would say the last parallel, which is probably the most important one, is innovation. I come from enterprise software where we looked at monthly, quarterly, biannual, annual release cycles. Well at Stripe, all of that goes out the door just like Amazon. We may have 100 to 1,000 APIs in motion at any time in alpha, beta production. And just like Amazon, we're iterating and releasing new innovations consistently. So I would say that's probably the most important one that we have with Amazon. It's a lot of synergies there, like deep integrated trusted partner synergies it sounds like. Agreed, definitely. And then we're seeing this, as, going more, as we are going more up market, we're seeing a demand for end-to-end -end solutions that require integrations with a CRM vendor for customer 360, with an accounting vendor for peer to procure order to cash, billing, accounting, with an e-commerce company like Adobe Magento to do better e-commerce. So more end-to-end -end, uh, solutions with these tech partners. We're working with our GSIs to help deliver those end-to-end -end solutions, and certainly but not least the dev agencies who are still sort of our core constituents that help us keep relevant with those developers. Now you mentioned this at the outset, but some things bear repeating. Can you go into a little more detail on the difference between me wanting to start up a business and take credit cards as payment 10 years ago, let's say, versus today? How much, how much of the friction have you removed from that system? It is, it is literally an hour to two hour process versus weeks and months before. And, but, but what are those steps? Like who, who would I, you, you mentioned this again, you mentioned yeah. this already, but, but go, through that, go through that again. Yeah, I'll, I'll, who I'll, would I have to reach out to to make this happen? I mean we're talking, you know, uh, relationships with banks, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. yeah, so it starts at initiating and registering that company. So imagine you going and having to register a company today. You can do that with a Stripe Atlas product in a matter of hours. Get your EIN number, get your tax jurisdictions done, your registration as a Delaware entity within the US, you can be anywhere globally and go do that within a matter of one hour. That's number one, you start there. From there, then it's a matter of embedding payment embeddables within your e-commerce platform, marketplace platform, et cetera. As you've heard us talk about seven lines of code to get payments going. You can quickly onboard, accept payments, process payments, reconcile payments, all within an hour. And that's just the start, but now you get into more complex use cases around marketplaces, multi-party connection, multi-party payouts, different commission rates, different subscription models. Think about a flat tier model, a metered tier model, all of these different things that we've abstracted and allow you to just use one, two, three different integrations to help accelerate and use that in your digital commerce platform. So all of these different workflows have, is what we've automated through our APIs. That's unbelievable. Yeah. It really is. It is unbelievable, the amount of automation and innovation that's gone on in such a short time period. What are some of the things as we kind of wrap up here that we can look forward to from Stripe from a roadmap perspective, uh, technology-wise, partner-wise? Yeah, so I mean, we have a slew of data, as you can imagine, billions of billions of transactional data. And you guys know what we do with data, is we're looking at fraud prevention, we're looking at, we have a product called Radar that looks at fraud, we're doing acceptance, adaptive acceptance to do more AI, ML learned data and authorization. We're also looking at how do we feed a lot of this financial data into the right mechanisms to allow you to then create new business models on top of this, whether it's cross-sell, upsell, to new user uh, business capture. Um, as well as, you know, one of the things I did not talk about, which coming from a farming background, is this notion of Stripe Climate, where we have upwards of 2,000 companies across 37 countries that are leveraging our Stripe Climate product to give back to tech advanced companies that are helping in carbon offset. And super exciting times there from an ESG, environmental, social governance point of view. So all of those combined is what excites us about the future at Stripe. Wow, the future seems unlimited. Lots super going exciting. on. Zaki, thank you so much for joining Dave and me talking about what's going on with Stripe. All the innovation that's going on, the, the synergies with AWS and what's coming down the pike. We appreciate your insights and your time. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, David. Appreciate All right, for Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the global leader in live tech coverage.